Are you staring at a blank screen wondering, how do I write copy that converts? I see all these other copywriters online talking about, oh, I write conversion copy, direct response copy, and you might be a copywriter wondering, how do I write copy that converts? Similarly, you might be a business owner who's selling your own products and you want to know, how do I write copy that's compelling, that gets people to actually buy, actually gets them to take action on what they are reading? That's what I want to talk to you about today because it can feel so overwhelming to learn how to actually write copy. There's so much information online. And the reason why a lot of confusion comes in is because you need to have some background about what your end goal is to understand how to write copy that converts. This is geared towards beginners, whether you are just beginning to market your product, whether you're just beginning to write copy, you're a copywriter that writes for clients, this is gonna help you. And I'm gonna try to keep it succinct because I can go off on tangents. Number one, stop looking for copy critiques. A lot of the freelancers who joined my freelance fast track challenge were telling me that they had been looking for copy critiques, people to look at their copy and give them feedback to let them know whether it was effective or not. This is one of the most common misconceptions. I think it's because a lot of us who want to be writers, we tend to have this um, student or like me, English major background where we had a teacher or an instructor that would look over our work and tell us how we did and give us a grade. The problem with that is you don't look at copy and marketing materials and look at it just from a grammar perspective. Now that's one aspect of it. You need to be grammatically correct to an extent. You wanna make sure that there's no errors and typos. However, speaking of grammar, you have to actually go off script and break a lot of grammar rules in good copywriting. So even that can be iffy if somebody doesn't understand your end goal. The reason why copy critiques are not really worth it is because whoever is looking at your copy needs to be the person who has skin in the game and and who actually understands the goal of the copy, understands the target audience, and that person can't be this third party. So if I was to show you, let's just say an example, I just got done writing a website for a personal brand photographer. If I was to show that to you right now, unless you are somebody who writes specifically for service providers in the personal brand photography industry, how would you really be able to give me feedback other than just commenting on maybe that something sounded awkward or the structure was off or why did you choose this word? Unless you're in that industry and you know how that industry speaks and what that industry wants, it would be very hard for you to provide feedback that would actually come in handy. Ultimately, the client, whoever is trying to market and sell that product, they're the ones that should be giving you feedback because it's them who's going to go out and put that on their website and see if it converts. It should be them who's giving you the information about their target demographic. So finding all of these people online to do a copy critique for you doesn't actually make sense. That's why I tell freelancers you should just get online, start pitching, start working for clients because the fastest way to actually learn how to be a copywriter is to just get out and start writing for clients and big part of that is testing. It's all about test, test, test. Did that message work? Did that subject line work? Did that hook get the person to stop the scroll? Marketing and sales copy is about testing the effectiveness from a data perspective, a numbers perspective, versus did you write pretty words on the page? Therefore, having a teacher, instructor, or just a third party give you a copy critique doesn't actually make sense. So don't let that stop you up. I want you to build your online presence first build yourself as a copywriter online, start reaching out to your ideal clients and get that practice with them. Get somebody to give you a chance and you will be much further ahead of somebody who keeps taking endless amounts of copywriting courses and looking for critique groups and having their copy critiqued by someone else. Because ultimately, if we're being honest, I would rather get out there and get the feedback from the client, have them ha be happy with my work and pay me and learn that way versus me going into a Facebook group and having my stuff torn apart, which it could not even be great advice, right? So don't waste your time with that. Now, tip number two, you need to spend a lot of time researching your target audience and getting into the mindset of your ideal client, the person who you are writing to. You have to spend actually the majority of your time there versus the actual writing. Because if you don't know what the pain points are, what their desires are and how they think, if you don't know what type of person the consumer is, it'll be very hard to write copy that does anything because it all has to be tailored to the ideal client, okay? So 
spend the most time researching the target audience, spend more time doing that than even the writing aspect. The other thing you want to do is determine what tone and voice you are going to write in. This is another big mistake I see with copywriters online or people who are struggling to actually do the copywriting part of all of this. If you have a deeper understanding of who the target customer, we call it the customer avatar, who that person is, you tend to know how they speak, what type of words they use, and more importantly, what words draw them in. So for example, I'll just go back to that website copywriting client I just worked with. Um, she was targeting professional women who are basically 40 and up, who are very accomplished in their careers, who wanted personal brand photos in order to effectively market their business online. That specific target demographic is going to be drawn to certain words. So I created a list in this document where it was like luxury, premier, customized. These, I call them mood words. I don't know what, what other writers call them, but they're words that are going to stand out to that target persona. So your copy is gonna be dictated a lot from the voice and the tone that you should use. If it's written in, let's just say an overly formal tone, very professional, maybe even academic, but you're trying to speak to Gen Z, who you know they say all of these different slang words, it's not gonna be a fit, it's not gonna resonate with them, right? So that's why I say it comes down to more than grammar, it's tone and voice. Here's the other part, so now we're getting deeper. You need to understand the industry that you're writing in. So the reason I say this is that the type of copy and marketing that a Nike or a Coca-Cola or these gigantic brands that are um, publicly traded companies, their marketing is gonna be a lot different than that of a small business entrepreneur. So you need to understand what industry you're working for because if you're dealing with entrepreneurs, creators, coaches, course creators, small businesses, really anything under 200 employees, that's a very simple message, especially let's say you're writing their website, right? You want the messaging to be really simple and clear and succinct versus overly cute and creative and all the stuff that you see with these big brands like Nike, how they have these really creative sessions with their marketing teams where they're coming up with taglines and you know these creative campaigns to create commercials. That's going to be very different than me writing a website for a personal brand photographer because the, my goal when writing copy for a service provider, or even a tech company, because obviously I've done a lot of writing in a tech space, you want somebody to understand what the product does within 10 seconds of getting on the page. And if you just have something very smart and like witty, crafty, whatever you want to call it. If that's what they're seeing when they get to the site and they have to burn calories to understand what you're actually selling, you will lose them in a split second. So whereas Nike has this huge brand power and everybody knows them already, they're not trying to make people understand what Nike is. It's a very different marketing approach. Therefore, the copy and the campaigns, the marketing will be a lot different. Most of us who are on this call are going to be dealing with small businesses under 200 employees that still need to educate people on who they are and what they do and grab that attention therefore the marketing and the messaging is going to be really simple so let's expound on that a little bit okay it comes down to marketing framework so how you will speak to the target audience in the copywriting is going to come down to a marketing framework and you're really better off learning one or two marketing frameworks that you're going to follow and that's going to determine your approach on how you write copy for your clients so I'm going to tell you the two frameworks that I use so I use something called brand script, Google Donald Miller, building a story brand. That book literally taught me how to create websites and how to write marketing messaging for companies. I also use another content marketing framework called They Ask, You Answer by Marcus Sheridan. So remember, Donald Miller and Marcus Sheridan. If you read those two books, you will have the bigger picture of a company's marketing and how to streamline their message so that all of the copy flows from that. So what am I talking about? I'll give you a little bit of a background. So They Ask You Answer is an awesome content marketing framework that you should be using if you're writing any type of long form content for clients. So that could be any type of like PDF download that you're creating for them. Maybe you are creating blog posts for them, even maybe long form newsletters, anything that's more on the content marketing side, you wanna reach read They Ask You Answer by Marcus Sheridan. 
So basically, he says that there's five topics that every company needs to cover thoroughly and transparently on their website in order to give a customer the big picture and have them feel that they have enough information to make a buying decision, make a purchase, right? So number one, that is price. So that's very controversial within every industry of whether you should put your pricing on your website. I think for SaaS, software as a service companies, that's 100% necessary. For solo printers, service providers, freelancers, I don't recommend putting your pricing on your website. So that advice I would say is definitely industry dependent. There's best of lists. So if this is a prime example, if you're a blog writer, you've most likely been hired to write these best of lists. Like here are the top 10 CRM softwares for your sales company. Here is the top 10 pieces of camera equipment if you want to become a YouTuber. When companies create those best of lists, it has a lot of SEO ranking power and it allows you to show authority. So for example, in my content marketing strategy for paidcopywriter.com, it might be beneficial for me to write an article that says top 10 copywriting courses that you should consider in 2024. That would do a lot for my content strategy. There's review articles. So, you know, we've all read review. There's Crunchbase. There's all of these companies, especially for technology, like Trustpilot, for example, you can see all of the reviews for software or Yelp or Google reviews. So review type content is really, really important. And then problems and comparison. So you're basically calling out the drawbacks of your products. You're comparing your products head to head with another type of product where you'll see some software companies do that. Like, hey, why choose us over Canva? Um, That's part of that marketing methodology. So again, When you understand they ask you answer that framework, you'll have a better understanding of what your client, if you're a copywriter for a client, you're going to understand what they're trying to achieve when they assign you that, right? How to write a review article, how to write an article that's based on the problems and drawbacks and the pain points, stuff like that. Again, I know that's a lot to take in, but if you read they ask you answer, you will understand what business owners are trying to achieve with their content marketing strategy. And you'll be able as a freelance copywriter to insert yourself into that strategy. Number two, Story Brand by Donald Miller. So this has boosted my income so much as a freelance copywriter because I am able to interview my copywriting clients and create a marketing messaging framework for them. So it's basically me distilling their messaging down into, hey, these this is exactly what your ideal client or customer wants. This is exactly what their pain points are. Here's how you guide your customer to make a purchasing decision. Building a Story Brand is an incredible free resource. You can read that book and actually know how to help your clients flesh out their marketing message. And I'll give you an example because, or I'll tell you what the steps are within the story brand framework. It's aspirational identity is step zero. So that's your headline. It's like, let's just put this in the context of website. When somebody goes on their website, the first thing that headline that you write should be who they want to be, who they aspire to be. Okay. Then you go to a character. So character just means who are they? Can they place themselves in, can they put themselves in this framework, in this, in this website? Basically it's like, oh, is this talking to me? Is this message geared towards me? Step two is has a problem. That's where you go into pain points. So you'll see companies listing off, hey, do you have, do you, do you struggle with this? Do you have this problem? Does this keep you up at night? Those are pain points. Then step three is meets a guide. That's where as a business owner, they kind of present themselves and say, well, if you've had this, this, this problem, I help millions of women lose weight and get in shape and feel the best. And I've done this for 10 years and I'm a personal trainer. That's when you start going into how you are a guide and how you can help them. Now, step four gives them a plan. So you'll see this again on websites. It'll kind of break it out into bullets, telling people how to get the result, right? So it's like step one, we take you through this. Step two, we take you through that. Step three, then we go into this. Calls them to actions. So CTA, calls to action. That's something you're going to be writing a lot of as a copywriter. If you're a business owner, you have CTA strategically placed throughout your website calls to action. It's not enough for a client to read down your website. They need to constantly be called to action. Click here, buy now, download here. Okay. So action is a huge step in this process. It's strategically placed throughout websites and copy. And then number six is ends in success. What is their life going to look like once they have the end results that your product delivers? Are they going to, you know, be down 10 pounds, feeling amazing? 
amazing in their skin and going out to parties wearing a bathing suit and, you know, feeling so free of all the insecurities. What does their life look like once they've had the transformation that comes from buying that product or pursuing those services? And then step number seven is helps them avoid failure. So you always want to, as a copywriter, add the consequences of what happens if you don't move forward with the product, right? Because there's that abandoned cart moment. There's that moment of this all sounds great, but I'll, I'll hold off. I'm not ready right now. I'll do this later. And as a copywriter, you have to really say, listen, if you keep waiting or if you don't do this, or if you neglect your health in this way, or if you don't implement this software, these are all the bad things that can happen. And you don't want to leave yourself vulnerable to those consequences. All of that to say, that's a really condensed version of the story brand framework and all of the formulas or the copywriting devices that are within that. Now, here's step number six. So there's so many different types of copywriting formulas out there, but I would like you to keep things simple because if you know these two, you kind of understand everything else. P-A-S and A-I-D-A. A -I -D -A. So P-A-S is problem, agitate, and solution. This is the easiest copywriting formula to employ because you are literally hooking the customer, the client, the prospect, whoever you're writing towards, you're hooking them with a problem. And because human beings tend to be so focused on problems, it's really eye-catching to people. Yes, I struggle with that. Yes, I have that problem. Yes, I've been trying to do that. Agitate is basically, it's interesting. I say this in my email copywriting tutorial on YouTube, but when you agitate the problem, some copywriters will say, oh, it's like sticking the knife in. It's like you say the problem and then you really start, you know, pointing out how bad that problem is. When I hear agitate, I think of how do we show further empathy? It's like, hey, I know you have this problem and I know that it impacts your life in this way, this way, this way. So I wish I could replace agitate with just empathize, but then it wouldn't be the PAS formula. So solution. So after you've presented the problem, agitated the problem, then you go to S, which is the solution. You present the solution and position whatever product you're selling as the solution to that agitated problem. PAS, super easy, super simple. Ada, attention, interest, desire, action. You guys can look up these copywriting formulas. There's so much information online about them, but it's basically, when I think of Ada, I think of social media copy because it's a lot of like, let's just say an Instagram carousel, right? So it's attention, that's that hook, whatever's on the screen that gets you to stop the scroll. And then interest, that's when you kind of, you know, list those informational tidbits that keep them interested. It's like, did you know that 80% of freelancers are making nothing right now? Something that's, you know, giving them that information and then it's desire. It's like, okay, you're leading them to focus now on what they want. It's like, oh, I learned that, but here's what I want. I want to make money. So attention, interest, desire, and then action. Then it's getting them to take the action, right? There's always that call to action. We want you to do something. So all of that to say, <laughs> these are ways that I want you to think before you go pursuing any type of copywriting. I'm just going to recap those. So number one, stop looking for copywriting critiques because they're really irrelevant unless the person is your end client and can actually tell you what's going on, can actually tell you, oh, this worked or it didn't, or this is in line with my target persona or not. Unless the person who's giving you the critique really understands your target audience, it's just going to be a grammar session, which you can use AI for, right? Spend more time researching the target audience than even doing the writing. If you have a deep understanding of what the target audience's pain points, desires, lifestyle, how they speak, if you know all of that, that is going to just have the copy flow out of you and you'll really understand how to create those messages geared toward a target audience, which makes it effective. You want to determine the tone and the voice of who you're writing towards. So if you are writing towards Gen Z, it's going to be a much different tone than boomers, right? Certain slang, certain ways that you want to break grammar rules, all that type of stuff is all going to be different. And it's going to help the copy connect with that audience when you're speaking them, speaking to them in a voice that they empathize and resonate with, right? Understand your industry. You are going to be writing much different copy for a small business. You're going to have a different marketing strategy for a small business than a Nike or a large enterprise publicly traded company. Understand what market you're playing in so you can actually deploy the correct type of copywriting devices for it. Learn marketing framework. So if you find yourself more in the content marketing land, if you're a blog writer or you're creating maybe any type of campaign that has some type of long form content associated with it, read They Ask You Answer by Marcus Sheridan to understand what companies do in order to educate customers with their content and how to educate them to make a buying decision. If you are writing websites, which is something I'm focusing on for 2024, where it's a long piece of content, but it's very conversion oriented, you want to read 
Donald Miller's building a story brand and you want to be creating what's called brand scripts for your companies. Understand what type of marketing framework is going to best match for your client or for the product that you are selling if you're a business owner. Master, I would say, two copywriting formulas. If you are going to practice, problem, agitate, solution, and ADA. If you have those two, you understand how to write copy, okay? And then finally, I skip this, <laughs> spend the most time mastering hooks and headlines. If they don't read whatever it is, if they don't open the email, or if you don't hook them with that first slide of your carousel, they're not going to read the rest of the copy. So hooks and headlines are the most important parts of copy. It's where you should also be spending the most time it's also the hardest right understanding what's going to actually hook somebody is the hardest part of copywriting but you need to get them hooked before they will read anything else you write so you really want to be spending the most time and you want to be studying which hooks actually hook people something I do that's been really helpful is that whenever I'm scrolling on social media I always pay attention to what made me stop because as you know we scroll we scroll we scroll but there's those certain carousels or reels or photos that get us to stop and if you can actually just study what made you stop you'll kind of understand oh that's the that's the strategy they used right there i could use that so i'm constantly screenshotting email subject lines that capture my attention instagram posts that capture my attention and then i'm trying to deconstruct it and see what stood out to me what captivated me what did they use there that actually helped me you know, keep reading and kept me captivated. And then I'll go and I'll, you know, store this all in a swipe file and I'll basically use this stuff as my own, right? So while I have you here, let's answer other questions that I have gotten on Instagram. I liked this question. Someone asked, what are practical steps to build a LinkedIn presence? Summarize it in a few steps, please. Okay. If I could summarize it in a few steps of how to get on LinkedIn to land freelance writing clients, you want to focus on being highly searchable. And there's three areas within your LinkedIn profile that make you highly searchable. It is your headline, your about me section, meaning like your description, your um, where you get to expound a little bit on who you are, and your work experience section. Uh, it'll have a little icon saying what your full-time job is and what you can do at your full-time job. If you're a freelance copywriter, it'll say freelance copywriter. Here's my little icon. Here's the description. All of that stuff works toward your searchability in LinkedIn. So if you're going to get on LinkedIn, one of the best things you can do is become highly searchable. And if you're going to do nothing else, focus on those three sections. And as a bonus, I would say focus on your photo because if they are scared away by your photo, you're not going to get them again to read all of the other cool stuff about you. Um, someone said, apart from blog posts, how did you learn to do other types of web copy, landing pages, help a newbie? Okay, good question. It was really a matter of monkey see, monkey do. The first time I was ever given the chance to write a copywriting website for a software company, I literally deconstructed their competitors' websites, tried to understand what they were doing. I built an outline based on that, and then I kind of plugged in the information for the client that I was working for. So again, that's why my strategy is always telling people to just put yourself out there, get the client to give you a chance, and then do the research and try to kind of learn as you go and see what works that way versus constant learning. Justin said, how can you write email subject lines without being too salesy so that the client would open and respond to cold outreach? Oh my gosh. Well, actually that reminds me, I got another question that also asked, it was from Fidel. It said, isn't the 30 days to paid program less beneficial for those who want to land clients via email cold pitching. So as you know, my course centers around a LinkedIn strategy. However, my freelance template playbook has a ton of templates that allow you to also use these messages via email. If you want to, let's say, because for example, not everyone's ideal client is on LinkedIn. So what you want to do is find out where your clients are, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, email, LinkedIn, Twitter. When you understand how to cut through the noise, with your message to that ideal client, it goes back to what I was saying before. You have to understand what their goals are in order to write a pitch that appeals to them. So for example, something that I've been doing lately is I target a very specific subset of the marketing department within software companies, right? They're doing something called demand generation campaigns. There's a specific marketing subset within a larger marketing department. You might be trying to write for the content marketing department or the product marketing department. So even just me saying the words demand gen, I'm automatically inserting myself into vocabulary that my ideal client uses, that they that it instantly resonates with them. They don't even 
necessarily expect a copywriter to know that, oh, she she's a demand gen copywriter. She actually specializes in the campaigns that I'm working on and that I'm employed at this company to do. So maybe if you're targeting someone that writes case studies, for example, you could include that in your subject line, case study writer. You want to be inserting yourself into the conversations that your ideal clients are already having and use the keywords that resonate with them. So use that in your email subject lines. I would say the big issue that I see with people who are doing pitches with email and they're coming across too salesy is that the messages feel blanketed. They feel like they could go to absolutely anybody. There's no level of personalization. And then they always focus on really generic business outcomes like boost your audience or you know generate more sales. Find out what their deeper desires are, your ideal customer, and personalize your message to the actual end goals and outcomes that they're exactly looking for. So for example, if somebody was pitching me on YouTube services, if they were able to tap in of like, hey, I can increase your watch time by X amount, versus, hey, let me write a thumbnail that gets you more views. Yes, of course, more views is what anyone on YouTube wants. But if you actually understood the deeper metrics behind what I'm trying to achieve on YouTube, increasing my watch time as an example, that would automatically stand out to me. So the question is, how can you find out more about what their goals are and then align yourself with that strategy and communicate that in your cold emailing efforts to cut through the noise because everybody is getting a ton of really generic pitches. And if you can cut through that noise and stand out, you are going to get a response. Pretty soon, the Freelance Fast Track Challenge is going to commence again. January, it is coming up. So make sure you're getting my emails because you'll be the first to know when that happens. Okay, five minutes over time. Have a great day, everyone.